May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Light overcoming darkness is a very evocative image, a very simple contrast of light and dark that the author of John uses to symbolically communicate a developing philosophy among early Christians. However, as evocative as it is, part of it might be lost on us. A point that I was reminded of while reading about this morning's gospel. Most of us are used to being able to bring light to a dark room with the flick of a switch. Our access to electricity means that there are many things that we can do with relative ease. From stoves for cooking, to TVs for entertainment, to computers for work. I can only try to imagine what it be, would be like without easy access to any of these modern conveniences that we have probably come to take for granted. Camping might be the closest experience that I've had to that, where basic utilities often take work. Water has to be collected from a tap. Tents have to be pitched for shelter. Fire has to be made for either cooking, heat, or light. And traveling to a tent or a washroom at night requires either good night vision or the aid of a flashlight. And in some places I've been camping, various critters could be just outside of that circle of light at my feet. In that experience of darkness or the absence of light, it represents various vulnerabilities. The absence of light conceals possible dangers. It creates an obstacle for either doing work or getting the resources that one needs to survive. It causes isolation or separation from others. Without light to illuminate, two people could be feet from each other and unaware of the other's presence. And for children looking for their parents, this could be quite frightening. Possibly also frightening for parents looking for a child in the dark. Camping can also be one of those experiences that reminds us of how fragile light can be. A little wind or rain and the fire can be extinguished. The flashlight's batteries can run out. Or if you're trying to find that flashlight when it's turned off, that can be quite a challenge. Perhaps the even more vivid image that comes to mind, at least mine, is walking through a winter storm at night. The wind howls blowing cold, biting snow past my face. Most of the world is obscured by darkness or blowing snow. However, the way is marked by small islands of light amidst the sea of darkness. Small recognizable features that show me where to go, guiding me on a path towards home through the storm. I have found that people can be like those little islands of light amidst that darkness. At least, that is what I think of when I hear the life was the light of all people. C.S. Lewis wrote that there are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal, and their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, or exploit, immortal horrors or everlasting splendors. This is not a call to naivete, not a summons to ignore the realities of sin and the difficulties that we face as humans. It is, however, an acknowledgement that there is something very special in every human life, something that can comfort others, something that can teach others, something that can empower others, 
something that can sustain others. In my life, I know that people are important. My life has been shaped by the relationships that I have had with many people. Sometimes I have lived in isolation or I've isolated myself from others, preferring solitude. But relationships with people are like those islands of light in the darkness and the storm. Perhaps in another setting, this would be a good way to introduce a chapter of an autobiography. An opportunity to recount the many people in my life who have shaped me or helped guide me on the path through the darkness and the storms. And there are many people who have done this, and I'd like to give thanks for the light they have added in my life and the lives of others. But I'd also like to look at something a bit more generic. Perhaps another story that we hear at this time of year that many of us can relate to. The other night, I was watching one of the versions of A Christmas Carol. Actually, if you want to be specific, it was The Muppets Christmas Carol. And I was thinking that Scrooge's experiences are in some ways like those experiences of light amidst the darkness. And that's not just the experience of those three spirits and the ghost of Jacob Marley. Scrooge's experience with his sister growing up, his boss, Mr. Fezziwig, and Belle, and others created experiences of love that he eventually remembered and eventually figured out how to once again reflect out into the world as he became a light for figures like Tiny Tim, who would eventually call him a second father. It was through remembering these experiences of love that, and along with fear of living the rest of his life in isolation and not adding to the love of the world, that enabled Scrooge to find his way back to caring for the world rather than exploiting it. So the experiences of love that we have with one another, the experiences of helping one another, can be that light in the darkness. So my prayer is that we go out to be that light in the darkness, the light of Christ. It may be the light that guides someone else out of the darkness. Amen. <laughs>